okay definitely one question is going to come in the june exam from joints so joints and their examples you have to remember that one sir now why i have included this 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 question here is that it's it has been the same question has been repeated in the last two exams uh, so last year like 2021 in the june exam as well as in the december exam this same question was repeated with the same diagram also uh, picture also that is a radiological image of all your tarsal bones given there and in tarsal bones yes the bone which is marked there in front of talus this big heel bone here is actually the calcaneus guys above that there is talus here or talus ke samne in front of that this one will be the navicular so god knows uh, they might again repeat or they can uh, ask you about any other bone there guys hai na so that is the reason why in our classes in our videos and doc tutorial already have made the student even draw the diagram for tarsal bones so you will be able to easily identify that is navicular sir in front of talus next one the nerve involved in a difficulty in eversion of the foot and loss of sensation in the dorsal aspect of the foot guys okay fine uh if you people have attended my classes um, anywhere guys whether it is on our doctorial platform or in the live face to face class agar aapne attend kiya hai to i hope you all remember my golden rule uh, about the five major nerves in the upper limb and about the five major nerves in the lower limb so <clears throat> uh in the lower limb like the five major nerves whatever five major nerves that you have they'll be supplying to all the compartments in thigh leg and the foot now when it comes to the lateral compartment of the leg in the lateral compartment of the leg you'll be having two muscles one is the peroneus longus another one is peroneus brevis in the lateral compartment of the leg you'll be having like two muscles one is peroneus longus and peroneus brevis and these two muscles they are actually supplied by superficial peroneal nerve superficial peroneal nerve it is the nerve of the lateral compartment so superficial peroneal nerve is supplying to lateral compartment and these two muscles when they are going to contract what is going to happen suppose if this is our foot this is our foot the right foot and the left foot the right and the left foot they'll be having a medial border here and this will be the lateral border here elevation of the lateral border if you elevate the lateral border that is known as what eversion of the foot when you elevate the lateral border that is known as eversion of the foot and eversion of the foot is done by the muscles present in the lateral compartment okay fine and then uh, apart from that yes in the other diagram that i have shown you here all this which is highlighted here in the green color this skin here it is supplied by superficial peroneal nerve there is nothing but the dorsum of the foot so dorsum of the foot is supplied by superficial peroneal nerve and exactly the same thing is given here in this question here guys nerve involved in nerve involved in difficulty in eversion of the foot the person is not able to eversion do eversion of the foot sir and there is a loss of sensation in the dorsal aspect of the foot so what is the nerve involved it is the superficial peroneal nerve which is involved here sir the superficial peroneal nerve that is involved here guys okay now apart from that your mci examiner is also interested in the deep peroneal nerve why because deep peroneal nerve is the one which is supplying to only the skin in the cleft of first toe and second toe only that skin which is present in the cleft of first toe and second toe that is the first web space so deep peroneal nerve is the one which will be supplied to the skin in the cleft of first toe and second toe sir that is the the first web space and apart from that the medial side of the leg and the medial side of the foot that will be supplied by saphenous nerve and saphenous nerve will be the branch of your femoral nerve only and the lateral side of the leg and the lateral side of the foot is supplied by the sural nerve and sural nerve is a branch of which one guys there is a tibial nerve theek hai na so on the medial side you'll be having the saphenous nerve which will be supplying and it is a cutaneous branch of femoral nerve guys and on the lateral side you'll be having sural nerve the sural nerve will be the branch of your tibial nerve so please remember this one uh, by this we actually complete about the sensory supply to your foot there guys sensory supply is also done here so superficial peroneal nerve will be supplying to peroneus longus and peroneus brevis that will be actually helping in eversion of the foot and then the superficial peroneal nerve will be also supplying to the skin covering dorsum of the foot and deep peroneal nerve will be supplying to the skin in the cleft of first toe and second toe all this has been already asked in your exam please remember that sir next one uh, now this is like a recent addition into your uh, mci uh mc exam like they are asking the questions regarding the thoracic duct this question um, 
लाइक थोरासिक ड्रग वॉज नॉट बींग आस्ड बिफोर लाइक यू नो टू थ्री ईयर्स बैक नहीं पूछा जाता था बट नाउट इज आस्किंग अबाउट थोरासिक ड्रग ऑल्सो सो येस आई हैव ऑल्सो इंक्लूड दिस इन द अपडेटेड टॉपिक्स फॉर यू पीपल इन दिस सेशन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट येस एट डॉक टू टेरल्स ऑल्सो वे आर एक्चुअली यू नो आई हैव रिकॉर्डेड फॉर द एफ एम जी पीपल लाइक सेपरेटली all the updated topics which are required for the uh, next session that is your december session guys now first of all uh, what you have to remember here is that okay what is the structure marked in this <coughs> image that is the thoracic duct here <coughs> the structure which is marked here is actually the thoracic duct sir and thoracic duct is actually going to begin from the cisterna chile in the abdomen you'll be having cisterna chile it is acting like a lymphatic heart all the lymph will be finally connected into the thoracic duct only there is cisterna chile so now what is going to happen the thoracic duct is going to cross the diaphragm so you have to remember i hope you all remember that very famous topic nowadays all the students are already expert in that one okay diaphragm actually has got like three major openings there are three major openings in the diaphragm so we all remember that very well with with the mnemonic as voice of america vena cavel opening esophageal opening and aortic opening vena cavel opening esophageal opening and aortic opening and aortic opening is the one from where the thoracic duct is going to pass at the level of t12 so aortic opening se wo pass hota hai it is going to ascend up and after ascending up it is going to deviate towards the left at t4 and then again further more ascending up deviate again towards the left and finally if you are able to appreciate in this diagram it is going to get yes draining all the lymph it is going to you know finally drain the lymph at the junction of this left subclavian vein here and this is the left internal jugular vein here so guys so the left jugular vein and the left subclavian vein at the junction of that it is finally going to when end or drain the lymph over there guys drain the lymph over there yes so remember the structure marked in the image i i repeat all the points that you have to remember about the structure marked in the image there that is thoracic duct and thoracic duct i want you to remember that is it is going to actually cross the diaphragm via the aortic opening then deviate towards the left at t4 and further deviate and finally drain the lymph at the junction of subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein sir subclavian vein and <coughs> jugular vein sir next one so all the points regarding that is covered now another important concept about the upper limb topic which is being tested many a times in your exam is about the nerves which are actually related to humerus Now look at this diagram here. In this, the nerve passing behind the mark structure. The mark structure is actually the medial epicondyle here. This is the medial epicondyle. And what is the nerve passing just behind the medial epicondyle? That is your ulnar nerve, sir. Ulnar nerve is the one which is going to pass. By the way, I am not concerned about only the answer for this question. Let us discuss the entire concept here. How many nerves are in uh, in total related to humerus bone, sir? Humerus bone को कितने nerves related होते हैं? There are totally three nerves which are related to humerus. there are totally like three nerves related to humerus sir theek hai and those three nerves will be number 1 the axillary nerve and number 2 the radial nerve and number 3 the ulna nerve sir so there are three nerves related to humerus the axillary nerve and the radial nerve and the ulna nerve and remember axillary nerve is going to pass behind the surgical neck of humerus radial nerve is going to pass in the spiral groove or the radial groove just behind the shaft of the humerus and ulna nerve is going to pass behind the medial epicondyle ulnar nerve is going to pass behind the medial epicondyle so axillary nerve is going to pass behind the surgical neck radial nerve is going to pass in the radial groove or the uh, you know spiral groove and ulnar nerve is going to pass behind the medial epicondyle so these three nerves are very much important extremely important concept for your mc exam and next june exam i'm expecting a question to come from here sir one question can definitely come from here also okay next one sir next concept a 65 year old lady presents with a cerebrovascular accident involving inferior frontal gyrus which functional area would mostly be affected so let us see which functional area is present in the inferior frontal gyrus so let us like quickly have a revision of all the broadman areas sir For example, if this is the cerebral hemisphere, the superior lateral surface, and in this cerebral hemisphere, first of all, in the temporal lobe, in the temporal lobe, you'll be having two sulci, two sulci. 
if there are two sulci, if there are two depressions there, obviously how many gyri do we have? Like three gyri, you know? If there are two sulci, there'll be like three gyri. And you people know very well, like if it is gyrus present there, what is the name of the gyrus? Temporal gyrus. So one will be the superior temporal gyrus. Another one will be the middle temporal gyrus. Another one will be the inferior temporal gyrus. Exactly the same concept you can also apply in the frontal lobe also guys here. In the frontal lobe also we will be having two cell gyrus. So there will be three gyrus but this time the name will be the frontal gyrus. So there will be superior frontal gyrus and then there will be middle frontal gyrus and then finally you will be having the inferior frontal gyrus. Now in the superior temporal gyrus, in the superior temporal gyrus, remember you will be having area number 41 and area number 42 sir. That is the primary artery area. Just behind that you will be having area number 22, artery association area. But when it comes to inferior frontal gyrus here, here you'll be actually having the area number 44 and area number 45 that is Broca speech area. And Broca speech area we know very well it is a motor speech area. Apart from that you also have the area number yes, 39 and 40 here which is representing the Wernicke speech area. And Wernicke speech area will be actually the sensory speech area sir. Wernicke speech area will be sensory speech area. So coming back to our question here, our question is actually about the inferior frontal gyrus. In the inferior frontal gyrus, you'll be actually having what part, sir? You'll be having the Broca speech area. So a lady presents with cerebrovascular accident involving inferior frontal gyrus. Inferior frontal gyrus, what is the area? That is a motor speech area, sir. Which area will be involved here? That is a motor speech area will be involved here, sir. Now, apart from that, if you just want to, want to, you know, uh, just complete this entire thing, I hope you all know that there is a very prominent sulcus here known as central sulcus. In front of central sulcus, you'll be having area number 4 and area number 6, the primary motor area and the premotor area. Behind the central sulcus, area number 3, 2, 1, that is nothing but your 3, 1, 2, that is nothing but the primary somatosensory area. And then finally, in the parietal lobe here, you will be having the area number 5 and area number 7 here. That is the somatosensory association area. And then, yes, in the occipital lobe, here you will be having area number 17, 18 and 19. That is the visual area, sir. So, you have to remember like three things whenever you are learning about the Broadman speech area, uh, sorry, Broadman areas. Whenever you are learning about the Broadman areas, remember three things, focus on three things. The name of the area, the number of the area and the location of the area. The name, number and location, guys. Name, number and location. Okay. So, name is important, number is important, location is important, sir. Okay, fine here.